Hey guys, and welcome back to Rose of Winter, and we are just getting ready to fight the Razor back. We're gonna leap in front of Kuya and protect him because we are awesome. I don't care how strong Prince Kuya is, he hired me to protect him, and that's what I'm going to do. I leap in front of him and swing my sword, my sword out in a wild arc. My sword scratches the Razorback's nose, it squeals angrily and veers off, but only for a moment. What? You hit it! You actually hit it! Just a tiny scratch. I think it was more surprised than hurt. Don't celebrate yet. The Razorback changes course and comes thundering at us, angrier than ever. I don't think a simple scratch will stop it this time. I really wish I could remember that secret weak spot, but I can't, so I'll have to improvise. Hold on tight. What? I'm not sure if I can do this, but I have to try. As quick as I can, I sheath my sword and take Kuya into my arms. He's heavy, but I can manage it. I hold on to him so as tightly as I can and leap into the air, an instant before the Razorback hits us. Against all odds, I jump clear over the beast. I know I shouldn't care about this stuff right now, but a part of me wonders if I look cool. We land safely in the snow, while the Razorback searches furiously for where we disappear to. Rosemary, that was incredible. We're not out of the woods yet. It just spotted us. The Razorback comes charging again. I leap deftly aside, just barely out of reach of those tusks. The beast come, keeps coming, and I keep darting away. My body moves on instinct. I think of nothing but keeping Kuya safe. The Razorback and I are caught in a strange little dance. It hasn't hit me yet, but I don't have an escape plan either. I know I can't keep this up for much longer. With every leap, I get a little more tired, and Kuya feels a little heavier in my arms. I have to end this quickly, or the Razorback will end it for me. When it charges again, this time, I don't leap aside right away. I stand my ground until the Razorback is almost on top of me. Kuya's arms tighten around my, my shoulders. I can tell he's scared. But I know what I'm doing. I don't need to be as close as possible if I'm going to hit my target. Just before collision, I step aside only slightly so that the great boar comes charging past me. It's so close. I can feel the brush of its hair against my skin. Without wasting a breath, I jab my sword into its face, hoping against hope that I hit the right spot. I hear a great squeal of pain. I keep leaping away, or I leap away, putting as much distance between us and that beast as possible. What did you do? Did you hit it? There's blood on my sword, so yeah, I guess I did. What good will that do? A little scratch won't kill it. Dummy, I'm not trying to hit it, or kill it. I hit it square in the eye, it's half blind. Sure enough, the Razorback is squealing angrily, rubbing its bleeding eye in the snow. For the moment, it seems to have forgotten us. Oh, that makes sense. But, but to have hit such a small spot on a moving target, that's impossible. I can't believe you pulled it off. Uh, it just takes practice. The Razorback squeals again. What a horrible noise. It seems to have caught sight of us with its one good eye. It must be angrier than ever. Time to go. I rush off, holding tight to Kuya, uh, holding tight to Kuya. Behind me, I can hear the thundering hoofbeats of the Razorback. But it's losing blood now and can't keep track of us so easily. Eventually, the sound dies down, fading into nothing. We lost it. We're safe. I'm not sure how long I've been running when we break out into a small, silent clearing. I finally feel like we can stop. Carefully, I set Kuya down and double over to catch my breath. Rosemary, that was so cool. Haha, <laughs> what? Cool? Really? Thank you for saving me. I, I'm sorry I didn't do much. I I told you, you couldn't have done much more than I did, and it's my job to watch your back. Besides, we only barely escaped, and we'll have to be careful not to run into that thing again. An angry, half-blind Razorback will, with a grudge is bad news. But you're very welcome, your magnificence. We decide to make a make camp in a ne cave nearby, so we're both pretty wiped out. For once in, a, in his life, Kuya is pretty quiet. 
He seems eager to set, help set up, too. It's weird, but not unwelcome. I settle down for dinner by the fire. I have some hard bread and jerky in my pack. Kuya doesn't have anything. He must be hungry. Um, your magnificence? You can have some of my food if you want. The great hunters of Moon Forest say that the only proper way to feast is to kill the strongest animal you can find and devour its flesh right then and there. If the blood is still hot, it joins with yours and you can feel the very heart of the beast pound in your veins. I'm pretty sure that's not how eating works, but if those are his ways, who am I to argue? I shrug and settle down to eat. I can't help but notice Kui is staring at my meal, though. I can even hear his stomach grumble. Although, I suppose you outsiders consider it rude to refuse to share meals. That's why you're looking at me like that, isn't it? I'm not looking at you. If you insist, I suppose I could break tradition just this once. He grabs a piece of hard bread from my pack and devours it. Haha, <laughs> he could have just said he wanted to share. Whatever you say, your mightiness. You know, Rosemary, I've been thinking. I don't think you should have to call me by those titles anymore. I mean, it's silly, isn't it? Oh, really? Why the sudden change of heart? It's not a change of heart, it's just... In Moon Forest, when two hunters slay a beast together, they become brothers. That's, um, the rule. It's not proper for one brother to consider himself superior to another. And since we slayed a beast together, you are my brother now. Or, sister. Anyway, we're equals. I think your definition of slaying a beast must be pretty liberal. But okay, that works for me. Shall I call you Prince Kuya now? No, just Kuya. I mean, if you don't mind. Okay, Kuya. He finishes his bread in silence, hardly even looking at me. It's not like he's ignoring me, though. More like he's suddenly shy. Well, why would he be so timid all of a sudden? I just can't figure this guy out. Rosemary, um, do you remember you were telling me about how you had a fight, had a, had to fight a dire bear once? I'd, I'd like to hear the rest of that story if you don't mind. Huh? Really? I mean, I guess I could, but why would you want to know about that or know that? You were right. It's not a very interesting story. I never even fought the dire bear. Please, tell me anyway. I'm okay. Let's see. There was this dire bear. Um, but you know that already. Anyway, it was hanging around the edge of a small village and scaring this one guy's herd of goats. And, but because it hadn't actually done anything, we thought it was a shame to kill it. So instead, the goat herd's wife made me this hat that made me look like I had goat horns. It was pretty silly. I went into the woods and started making these goat noises, you know, bleeding. And the dire bear followed the sound into the woods. I managed to lead it far enough away that it never bothered the goats again. But the goat herd and his wife thought it was hilarious. They laughed and laughed at me, calling me stuff like Lady Bleats a lot. But they gave me plenty of cheese to take with me when I left, so I guess they're alright. When I finish the story, I cringe a little. Definitely a you-had-to-be-there thing. But to my surprise... Haha, <laughs> that is absolutely, without a doubt, the funniest story I've ever heard. Rosemary, you're incredible. A great fighter and a marvelous storyteller. Is there anything you can't do? Ha ha ha. Laying it on a little thick there, isn't he? I'm starting to get freaked out. What is this guy's angle? I'll have to keep my wits about me in case he tries anything. Um, I didn't think it was that funny, but thank you, I guess. Kuya finally stops laughing after a few minutes and wipes tears out of his eyes. Then he just stares at me with his big puppy dog eyes for what feels like way too long. You know, your hair is very pretty in the firelight. Okay, time to change the subject. Haha, <laughs> thanks. So, um, what about you? What about me? Well, you've told me plenty of stories about already about, like, killing monsters and great hunts and destroying enemy armies and stuff, like... But that can't be all you do, right? I mean, what's your day-to-day -day life like? Tell me about Moon Forest. It's pretty much a mystery to me. Oh, that? Well... To my surprise, he seems reluctant to talk about it. 
Moonforest is small, smaller than most kingdoms, I'm told. All the f families are familiar with each other, even the royal family, for better or worse. It's thick with trees and in constant twilight, even in the daytime. No one knows why. It might be some ancient magic baked deep into the land. So it's always dark outside? Forever? I think it kind of sounds beautiful. Because just having a eternal night time or like that would be pretty neat so i think it sounds beautiful it is very beautiful i'm glad you think so oh why is that uh nothing never mind his voice wistful and lonely jerks off with those words i wait for him to continue but he doesn't. For a moment, there's only the sound of the crackling fire. Why in the world is he acting this way? It really isn't like him. Um, it sounds like you love it there. Parts of it, uh, parts of it are nice, yes. The trees are much larger in Moon Forest. They're purple and reach farther into the sky than you can see, fading into mist. The shadows seem to fold around them like blankets. Game! Why? Well, anyway, I was kind of going to end it soon anyway, so... I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Please do not open word. Oh god, everything is a mess now. <laughs> Uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I love you guys. Stay kawaii and have fun out there.